Yeah, everybody, before the video starts, I just want to say, sorry about the audio of my mic. Um, I'm using, I'm literally like, this is my setup. Like this, this is my music production studio. Uh, that's a burrito. That's a burrito being propped up on the on the laptop. Um, this is my entire setup. So I don't have much professional equipment quite yet. So my uh, my voice is way quieter than the actual audio. Uh, but I mentioned in the end that you'll you'll see in the end because you're gonna watch till the end. You know what I'm saying? Because like it's so interesting. But yeah, sorry about the audio. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Peace. Yo, what up everybody, it's Trisect, back again with another track breakdown. I'm breaking down this Dark House tune called Follow Me, just released the other day on uh, Ain't to Head. Dark House, 124 BPM, D sharp minor. Uh, if you haven't heard the song yet, this is what it sounds like. And uh, then we'll get into it. That is not the correct, <laughs> that is not the correct laugh. Yeah, well, ignore that. Uh, when I opened this project, there was some missing files and I had to replace them, but I don't think that's correct. That was weird. Anyway, everything else sounds normal, though. Yeah, tip, if you ever finish your projects, make sure when you're done, you save as, and then you press collect all and save. Uh, right, where, is this? where did it say that? Oh yeah, right here. Click on save. Press that when you're done with your project so it saves it all locally so you don't have missing files when you open it again because that was annoying. And sometimes that happens where you have incorrect files there. That was weird. Anyway, okay. <clears throat> so pretty much 124 BPM. Intro, very simple. Kick, snare, kick, snare with the little perks. Um, and I have the have it filtered down uh, this is specifically you know for like DJ's to mix in and then does that for a little bit more then I bring some more low-end in add a respace respace some, some uh, exhale contact library Boom, bada, bing, all right. That's pretty much it, and then I go switch into this build. Start to sneak peek the bass. Yeah. Yeah. There is some residual distortion there, but I just kind of left it. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's being filtered with this stuff right here. Yeah. Classic filtering um, comes in, risers, you know, all kinds of tension building stuff. Got these vocals kind of saying, like, we gonna dance or whatever, we gonna dance. We gonna dance. We gonna dance. We gonna dance. And then after four bars, we're gonna dance tonight. We gonna dance tonight. We gonna dance tonight. So then it goes into the pre-drop, which is uh, saying this. Blow the roof up and I'm taking flight. Blow the roof up and I'm taking flight. That's deep. And then uh, it says follow me, and that's kind of like the recurring theme. Follow me. Follow me. Yeah. Follow me. Yeah. Boom, bada, bing. Hell yeah. Little motif there. Okay. Um... So I guess we can start with the drums. So we got kick and snare, kick. I love this kick, uh, it's from Masteria. I think I, I 
I think I was on I subscribed to his Patreon a while ago and I got the the samples from him. It's super good though. Um, it's a very like I don't know how to describe this kick, but it's got that nice thump to it. It's a nice thumpy kick. So I picked that, shortened it a little bit to taste. Um, and I think I did, yeah, I just left it there. And for Dark House, um, after referencing a lot of tracks, uh, in the Ableton Spectrum, there's a little tip for you guys. Usually kicks are hitting in the Ableton Spectrum. Kicks are hitting um, anywhere from minus five to minus two dB in the sub range. So that's just something to keep in mind is with house, it's usually anywhere from minus five to minus two dB. And kicks are either in usually A or F sharp around there is the sub range. It seems to be the sweet spot that a lot of producers go for. Um, it's just from referencing a lot. So that's a little tip there for you guys if you're making dark house stuff. Uh, and the snare, nice and crunchy guy. It's uh, wide, so I got a wide one using Fatrator, widened it, and then I got a mono one. So when you play it in mono, uh, yeah, when you play this in mono, it still maintains most of its integrity. So it's always good to have a, I always do a wide layer with my snare and then a mono layer just to, you know, give it some extra width. Okay, um, side chain trigger right here, just a little like white noise blip, but it's muted. Okay, um, hi-hat, closed hat. I'm not a huge fan of that classic super open hat house hat. I, I don't know, it just gets really annoying to me because every single song has it, so I just chose to do a closed hat. Kept it right in the center, because that's usually what a lot of house peop house music does. Is the hats are always like direct center. Um, yep, and in the pre-drop I had this little like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like, whoosh, like throws you into it. Also got these sub-sweeps here. Oh, yeah. That kind of translates pretty cool in a bigger system. And then... Uh, main bass nice crunchy big old plucky boy so the way I made this this is a cool little tip that I'll share with you guys is um, to achieve a really really sharp pluck bass what you can do is uh, is um, so listen to this okay so this is the bass from serum right so I have a transient layer here and then I have a bass layer combined. So you notice how when I'm in 16th notes, that very first pluck, super sharp. Every single one after that, super muddy. It's not as sharp. So what you can do to maintain the integrity of your plucks is print them to audio. Um, and I, I, a lot of people are probably aware of this, but I'm just showing you if you don't know this. So, what, so what's happening is all this compression going on, like within Serum and all this stuff, um, the release of the compression is too slow, so it makes the very first hit of the bass sharp, and then all the ones following it, not sharp, because the release of the compression isn't going up in time. But I liked the way that it sounded, so what I did is you just resample it to audio, so you just put an audio track, if you don't know how to do this, and then you press... Um, Oh, that's what it is. Okay, there we go. So you just press resampling, arm it for recording, and then whatever you got going, um, and then you record, right? So then you have this, all right? It's in your arsenal now. So you have this very sharp. It's kind of being double compressed right now because it's in the same group, but you get, the, get what I'm saying. So now you have this super sharp plug, and it would, without it being double compressed, it sounds like this. So when it's printed to audio like that, you don't have to worry about fucking with compression or anything like that. You can just print it to audio and every single hit of the pluck is going to be very sharp and have a nice transient on it. So yeah, that's a little quick little tip there for you guys if you didn't know that. I love doing that. Um, and if you, for example, if you wanted to have another note, you could just do the same thing. So say you wanted to have an octave higher note. So this is that same bass, but an octave higher. 
all you got to do is the same thing is just print that to audio and then you have a, a sharp high bass and right here I titled it high and you know, I can title this low now I, have, now I know I can make melodies out of audio in separate tracks so I know which one is which and keep the integrity of those big strong plucks so that's kind of how I went about that um, and to make your plucks sharp in general uh, use a transient layer that gives it that like that like nice little crunch and then get a nice bass going and you get really thick stuff um, Ponch is a really good plugin for transient shaping and then use also um, another two other plugins that I have it's called transient master and slap by yum audio those two plugins are also really good for transient shaping and making shit sharp okay next we got our bass here okay so that's how I went about making the bass and I just did this like nice groovy plucking bass line yeah. Oh, yeah. and then I got my little formity mouth bass yeah, 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 yeah. Like that I use this in a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's on the form filter. Yeah, and then I'm automating it. As you can probably tell. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, what's going on there? Got that plucky boy going on, so that's kind of how I went about that. Um, then that's pretty much it for the bass. And then I got this after you know four bars or whatever. I got this little. <laughs> to further accentuate the drop, then I have this break here. <laughs> And then we add some mean, fat percussion. Um, got this little fill. Nice and clean. And then, a little tom hit. And then here we got the perks, the percocets. Here we got drop effects. So this is where I added some cool little Yep. And then after that we go into the C section of the drop. Also, yeah, it's really good to have these little um, waypoint markers. To add those, all you gotta do is go up here, right click, add locator. Um, and then you got a locator then you can kind of keep track of where your transitions are at in your project. So yeah, I use all those. So we got drops 2C, or 1C, yeah. I guess it's supposed to be 1C, whoops. I don't know why I put 2C there. But anyway, yep. And then I went to a different little, more minimal rhythm. And then also when you're working on audio, you can manipulate stuff. So as you can see here, I did a little reverse. All I gotta do is just uh, uh, come in here, press the little reverse guy. That's how you do that. Okay. Yeah, so just kind of manipulating stuff and making sure stuff stays interesting. Um, and then over here, uh, all kinds of like group compression and then taking up some of the low end here. It's always good to check your low end too. So in my master, I have a low end check. checks and all that stuff too um yeah so oh yeah so as far as bass goes for low end checking if you guys want to know what i've when i was referencing stuff um referencing stuff you can see uh right here at the um, d sharp one 
it's hitting at minus 6.5 dB in the sub range. Um, so what I like to do personally is make, um, make sure my kick is above the base sub just a little bit. So my kick's at like minus four-ish, minus 3.5. So three dB less. And then that's where my sub's hitting for the synth. Um, and I don't have a dedicated sub layer because the synth was doing it just fine. It was fat enough. And then um, to achieve the 6.5 dB, you can see here that I made a little spike in that range right here. So went up 4 dB in that, that D sharp area and then in that D sharp zero area. So yeah, where's that? Okay. Um, and then it goes into a breakdown, you know, classic house stuff, you know, filler stuff, and then build again. And then the second drop is pretty cool. Uh, it's very similar to they added this cool format texture to it. So. So the way I went about doing that. So it's the exact same bass and everything, except all I did was uh, add this guy. It's a return track. So instead of editing, making a new layer, low-cutting it, and adding a higher layer, I added a return track and then just um, cut out the lows so it maintained the integrity of the low end from earlier. Because I had fine-tuned that low end to be like just the right level. So if I start adding a bunch of distortion effects on the bass for the second drop, it would take away some of the integrity of that low end. So to avoid that, you can just drop a return track, um, cut the lows out so the lows maintain there, and then you can add new textures on top. So I added this format filter from some formats that I made in this plugin called Rift. It's super good for format stuff. They even have like um, filter presets called, uh, you go here to, uh, what is it? Yeah, peaking. And pretty much what a format filter is, it's just a bunch of residencies in a certain location. So Rift has them right here. And pretty much that's what I did there. And uh, I automated that over time. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. So over time, I began to automate it. Didn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah okay. That's what I did. Yeah, so you begin to automate it. So, and then it keeps going here, and then 2B, it starts doing this. So I'm automating the cutoff of the filter. So yeah, I love nice guttural mouthy sounds, so that's how I went about doing that. <laughs> because without it, it's the same bass. Yeah, do not underestimate the power of return tracks. Like, you can do a lot with return tracks. It blows my mind. Um, and I have some other return tracks here, but I don't think I'm really using them. I just kind of mess around with return tracks when I'm like mixing stuff. But in the bass, I have a slight bit of reverb going on here. Uh, manipulator's on, widening it a tiny bit, and it just adds a tiny bit of room. It's very low on the decay and everything. I use Valhalla room. Okay, that's pretty much it for the master. I'm just using a completely stock Ableton thing that I made. Um, it's kind of just like a it pushes things. It's, it, when I try to make super over compressed heavy stuff, I put this master rack on. I'll show you it real quick. Um, but I've actually kind of updated my flow recently, and all I have on my master when I produce is a Fab Filter Pro too. That's it. Like that is literally it. Um, and everything else is in the mix, and that's created way cleaner stuff for me. Uh, but yeah, this one's definitely a lot more pushed. So yeah, minus 60B utility, and also bass mono is on. So if you don't know you want your bass to be mono. So in utility, you can click this button here, bass mono, and then right here, you can set it to where, which frequencies you want to be completely mono in the track. And so I always have that on too. So minus 60 dB, kind of just giving you some more room to master and saturate stuff. A little saturation, TDB up. And then uh, this is a, what is it? What's that called? 
No, that's what it is. Okay. Some EQs getting out harsh frequencies, some mid side EQ, multiband dynamics, taking a little, like, a little some of the mids. There's the settings there, blah, 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 high stuff, low stuff. Um, bass punch. I love this preset. Blue compressor. I'm messing around there. Limiter again. Um, three mil lick ahead, all that stuff. Okay. And then this is the, what's it called? Um, what's that? There's a certain type of EQ, and some dude made it. Some, I forget, but yeah, it's that EQ. It's it's really good for getting rid of harsh frequencies, because um, it's like specifically tuned. I got this off like Reddit or something, and these little notches you can open up, and if you have any harsh frequencies, it's very likely that you could just tweak one of these and get it out of there. So yeah, I always have that on my master, uh, but like not anymore. Like I said, I just use Bepelter Pro, and everything else is in the mix. But this is what I did for this one, and then utility again, bass confirming that it's bass mono even after all this press uh, stuff so making sure the bass in mono because um, if your bass is wide and well, that's another thing when you when you're making house music or any kind of music that'll be played loud um, like in a bigger system uh, most places will be playing your stuff in mono because they don't want to have to deal with phase issues like pretty much what phasing is is like phasing if you don't know what that is I can show you yeah yeah let's go right here Bada bing, bada bing. So this is phasing. This is the this is what's called polarity. Um, so this is the left and right channel of your uh, audio, and when you're phasing, it's when uh, one one side. This is this is how I understand phasing, at least. <laughs> it's when uh, one side of the track, either left or right, is out of phase. So that would mean like this this portion of this um, sample or like audio file is out of phase so when you use widening plugins that aren't good for mono which is something that i did i did not know until recently so a lot of my older stuff is kind of like not good with phasing stuff and sometimes i just don't even care either because i don't know but yeah so this is phasing um or this is not phasing because they're pretty close in line as you can see but if this hump right here was like more over here um you can imagine phasing this is how i imagine it it's when your when your speaker is trying to push out and in at the same time, because there's a negative and a positive polarity, and then when those two polarities are like fighting each other, it can make a signal weaker. Or if it's like equally um, fighting each other, then it'll completely cancel it out. You might not hear any audio. So that's why it's important that I have this bass mono on, so that when I play it in a club, eventually um, the bass will still be coming through and not be getting lost in the live setting because it's all in mono or something. That's how I understand it. Also, there's this plugin span that um, you can use. So right here, correlation meter. When you're in the red, that means you're out of phase, no good. When you're in the green, that means you're in phase, good. And usually if you're like right around here, you're chilling, so. So see, we're playing around in the green there, so that's usually what I check. Yep, okay. That's a little breakdown of my song, Follow Me. Hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Um, ooh, yeah, a little update. I am almost finished with my... I know I've been teasing this for a while, but <laughs> I am making a bass pluckery pack. It's a serum preset bank full of all kinds of heavy bass plucks, super good attack. Um, I've never seen anybody make a pack that was just specifically for bass plucks. I was like, all right, I'll make one because I've finally learned how to do all that stuff. Because um, when I was starting, I was like, I was like, why is there not a pack that has bass plugs? Because all, I, like, all my music, I use bass plugs in it, and nobody makes a specific pack for it. So I'm making one. It's super sick. All four macros are, you know, controlling stuff. Um, and they're really heavy plucks. Um, really sick, heavy plucks. So that's almost done. Keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm currently in Okinawa, Japan. I get out of the Marine Corps in four months. Once I'm out, I'm going to get a whole setup. You know, get a whole studio going, good camera, good mic, and I'll make more tutorials. So let me know in the comments what kind of tutorials you want to see from me. And last but not least, after all this stuff that I showed you, um, never forget that you're making art. So don't overthink the engineering side of it. Just remember, make something cool. Don't overthink it. And when you're beginning, quantity over quality is way better. That's from my experience because each track I make, I learn something new. I'm still not anywhere near where I want to be, but I'm closer than it was 
three songs you go, for example, instead of overthinking one mix and the engineering of it. So don't get lost in the boring stuff, but the boring stuff is essential to making better music. But just remember, you're here to make art and not overthink a mix or master or something. So I always want to remind people of that because that's something I always struggle with because everybody's always like, oh, your compression this and that, your 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 phase is out of tune and like you got to tune your kick. And, 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 and I was just like, ah, it stressed me out. And then I hit a point where I was like, I don't care about that stuff. I'm just here to make art and put stuff out because I like it. Don't forget you're doing that. You know, learn the boring stuff over time and do the fun stuff all the time. Peace out, everybody. Also, yeah, again, let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you want to see from me tutorial-wise. And when I'm out in four months, that stuff will be flowing like crazy. I'm going to think about doing sample packs, more presets, more tutorials, um, making different genres, showing all the little stuff I've learned over time. Um, I don't know. Whatever, whatever you guys want to see from me, let me know in the comments. All right, thanks, guys. Peace.